We're Thank back on know. The Breakfast with Plus, on PLUS TV Africa right here. And uh, we dove straight to a first conversation. Now, dis dissatisfied with the conduct of the 2023 general elections, no fewer than 10 of the 18 political parties have filed 431 petitions at the various election tribunals in 37 or 27 states of the country to quash the victories of those uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission declared winners. There are five petitions against the declaration of Ashiwa Jobola uh, Tinubu of the All Progressive Congress, uh, APC as president-elect. This brings the tentative figure of petitions to 436. The figure will be more if those from the remaining nine states uh, tally. Now, those seeking the nullification of Tinubu's victory are Alaji Atiku Abubakar of the People's Democratic Party, that's the PDP, Peter Obi of the Labour Party, candidate of the Action Alliance, that's the AA, Movement, uh, Allied People's Movement, that's the APM, and Action People's Party, the APP. They also petitions across state against the outcome of some governorship state House of Assembly and House of Representatives elections. Now, apart from the five parties kicking against the result of the presidential elections, other parties at the tribunals include the APC, the Social Democratic Party, that's the SDP, the New Nigerian People's Party, the NNPP, the All Progressive Grand Alliance, APGA, and the Young Progressive Party, that's the YPP. The number of petitions may increase further after April the 15th when you have supplementary polls for two governorship and five senatorial, 31 House of Representatives, 57 state assembly slots. Now, Lagos State is not excluded as the People's Democratic Party's candidate has submitted a petition before the governorship. Uh, just uh, looking at the election governorship tribunal of Lagos State challenging the outcome of uh, the uh, governorship elections right there. Uh, we're talking about Abdullah Aziz Al Adejiran, that's Jando, the People's uh, Democratic governorship candidate, who said that he's calling for the disqualification of the All Progressive Congress uh, president elect or governor elect and the Labour Party as well candidate in the election for non-compliance with the Electoral Act of 2022, as well as the guidelines of the Independent National Electoral Commission. To make sense of all of this this morning, we have a legal practitioner who joins us live in the studio this morning, Sir Leonard Ayongo. Leonard, it's good to have you join us. Yes, yes. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning, viewers. Uh, Messi, it's good to be in your studio for the first time. It's been Zoom and all that, so... I'm happy to be in this cozy environment. De definitely. <laughs> I mean, we, we're also happy to have you here. But yeah. you, you, let's get into it. The elections have actually ended. Uh, the presidential elections, the governorship, state assembly, what have you. The entire elections for 2023 has actually ended. But then again, it doesn't look like we have peers. So a lot of petitions upon petitions. And maybe, just maybe, we'll anticipate more petitions. I'd like to, you to share your thoughts uh, on that. How does that even make you feel? Uh, what do you think about it? Well, um, maybe I could just add that the elections are not actually concluded yet. You know, the supplementary election on the, on the 15th of this month, tomorrow, or well, this weekend, yeah, 15th, the one in uh, Adamawa and KB for the governorship. That goes to show that, um, do we really have a concluded election in Nigeria? It's a rhetorical question. Because um, if something is concluded, uh, ideally it means that uh, it is done and everybody should go home and take it. But I'm so sorry to say that uh, most of these petitions that you see in either the governorship uh, tribunal or the presidential tribunal, it maybe it's as, as a result of the credibility of the elections itself. The numbers, just like you read, that is staggering and it's still counting. It shows that almost everybody that participated in, that, uh, in this last election is going to court. I mean, the losers especially. Uh, so what is the credibility landmark of that, judge, of that election? It's what um, we could question. Why not necessarily being legalistic this morning? I think it's one aspect that we have to, as the election, the election that was conducted, as this complies substantially with the electoral act. That's a big, very big question. So, but the general mood of the country can tell you otherwise, because um, 
the expectation was that, okay, this is going to be a technology-based um, election. Unlike the previous election, we're made to understand that, okay, the beavers, uh, of course, uh, there will be electronic transmission of, of, um, of results and all that. Uh, substantially, that wasn't complied with uh, from the plethora of uh, petitions we have. But I think the credibility of this, of this last general election is the one that is being questioned. But also remember that, uh, with, 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 great, with the greater respect now, the judiciary um, or the courtroom has become part of the electionary process. Of, of course, it's provided for in the, in, in the Electoral Act and the Constitution that if you, if election is conducted and you have participated and you, you are not uh, satisfied, you can go to the tribunals. So, but what, we, thought, we felt that this time around we're going to see less of those cases. But unfortunately, we have those plethora of uh, cases before the court to decide. Mm. So, b b before we get to, you know, some of the issues, I mean, I'm not sure that we would have time to delve into all of the petitions that, you know, the, that has been put out in front of the courts, however it is. But just before we get into that, why are we still grappling with uh, this sort of democracy where we probably have to end at the court? or, you know, go to the tribunal. What exactly is wrong with the system? Well, um, I have said this several in different um, fora that uh, laws, without uh, the implementation, the, without implementing the sanctioning aspect of the law is nothing but mere musical instrument. What do I mean? Um, when you have laws, and people violate laws, and there's no punishment for it, I mean, the, the temerity continues, the, 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 the impudence continues. Now, we have laws in this country. We have the Electoral Act, we have the Constitution. These are the principal legislation governing elections in Nigeria and other guidelines of INEC and all that. And when people don't, or even the electoral body don't comply with it, I probably say that there should be sanctions. Once there's no sanction for these uh, aberrations, we will continue to have what we are having now. Um, that is one aspect. But the second aspect is this, that um, each election cycle was supposed to have improvement based on the previous experiences. So there was so much expectation for the 2023 general elections that is going to be, it was supposed to be technologically driven. For the first time, the Electoral Act um, captured the electronic transmission of results. But you know, I'm not delving into this um, technical area, this uh, legal area, because these matters are in court. We want to see how the court will come out with the final decision on electronic transmission of results and all that. That's why I don't want to preempt the court. I'm being very careful on that aspect. <laughs> so, but, but you see, um, people feel that going to court is part of the election, which, is not, which shouldn't be the case. Because if you see what happened in Kenya presidential election, within two weeks of the presidential ele uh, uh, um, election, there was vetted by the, by the Kenyan Supreme Court. But in our own case, it will drag and drag despite the uh, enormous work that has been done. You see that these processes are not really, uh, we don't really observe time, especially um, post-election matters, not pre-election here, there's time frame. Uh, but even the post-election that you now have 180 days to determine this election matter, uh, to me, I think it's, it's rather too long because I am of the opinion with some other pundit that this matters uh, going forward, we should f find a way and see how it can be concluded before swearing in of any um, uh, elected person that is being challenged. But you see, somebody is in court, somebody is coming out to uh, defend the mandate and all that, and then another person takes it. That's why you have staggered elections in Anambra and other area where, you know that those governorship elections are different now. The one is holding different dates and all that because of court decisions. So as going forward as Nigerians, we should look at areas that we can improve on. And one of those areas, cardinal point, is that I think that election matters should be concluded before swearing in. That's my personal opinion. Mm, so, so are we going to, are you, are you proposing that there should be some sort of, you know, um, legal provision to that? Because there's Yeah, yes, of course, of course. That, 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 like I said, um, elections is a process. Electionary is a process. Even the election itself. We keep evolving. The, the society evolves. Of course, you, you now know that um, the primaries are ahead almost six months to the general election. That's why you have most of these pre-election matters are now concluded. But um, we can go further by legislation, of course, that 
election matter should be concluded before swearing in. Because the expectation and the mood of the country is like, okay, uh, if a, a particular candidate or uh, that have been declared winner is challenged and, you, and the person is sworn into office, I mean, he already has an advantage, whether we like it or not. So these are areas that we can keep improving. But then, the credibility of election, and just like I said, if somebody has um, violated the provisions of the law in the conduct of the election, there should be punishment for such. For such. The difference between us and other crimes is that we do not punish offenders in the country. We do not. You know, in other crimes, people commit offense, people, and they are punished. If you cannot do the, the time down, don't do the crime. But here, there's so much impunity. And that is the difference. And, and going forward, I think we should look at how to punish people that, um, that, that uh, commit this aberration. That's why people have been calling for um, tribunal to try election offenders. You see where there was uh, voter suppression, people were prevented physically from participating in elections across the country. Mm. So we should have punishment for such behavior. So, so as we continue with this conversation now, uh, because we, we can't be, begin to you know, preempt the court and the judgment of the court would just allow the court to do her, you know, her duty, however. But um, is it ever possible that we get to a point in our country where we would have elections conducted and then results have been declared without having people approaching the election tribunal going to court? Is, is, are we ever going to get to that point? Yeah, it, it, is it possible to attain it? And what exactly is responsible for, you know, this behavior where every, I mean, we thought that in 2023 would have less of court cases, but that's not, that's not the case. We're having more petitions. We're anticipating more petitions with the, you know, supplementary elections uh, that will be conducted. So again, I ask you, do you think we'll ever get to that point? And what is responsible for this particular behavior and pattern? Well, um, there's no perfect election anywhere in the world, even in the U.S. that we, um, we try to emulate. But there's normally substantial compliance with the law, which, and of course, offenders are, are, um, are punished. Okay, you can see even the indictment of the, the former president, Donald Trump, because he was, doing, um, he was supporting people to act against the state. Now, what we have in this country, I keep saying, do we have deterrence? Do we have people that, of course, even the, the umpire itself, the INEC, some of their staff, whether ad hoc or permanent staff, those that have been found to be culpable, have they been tried? We have, of course, we have very few convictions um, um, in Akwaibon, where Guinea was the resident electoral commissioner, where a professor was convicted. That is commendable. But how, from there, how much have we uh, proceeded from there? How far have we gone? So where there's no punishment for these acts, we will continue to have this kind of uh, aberration. That means, um, of course, you hear this adage, which I go to court. If you are not um, uh, satisfied, go to court. And it's very embarrassing to some of us that have been in practice. By, the, by, by God's grace, I've, I've done 18 years as a legal practitioner. And um, I, 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 I've, I've sat in global audience where um, different jurisdictions, legal jurisdictions in the world have been, compared with, have, been, have been compared. Especially in Africa, People, there's so much impunity. And people should be afraid of the court. People should not say, okay, um, you have committed, if you think the, the election is okay, go to court. The court is there as the last uh, um, uh, arbiter. So, so why is there so much impunity is the question? Because punish, we don't have punishment, we don't have the will to punish offenders. How can you, um, when the law has stated clearly that there should be electronic transmission and you fail, and you or somebody prevented, if it is found, of course, you know these allegations, alleg uh, allegation has to be proven in court. So where did those aberrations occur? Where those crime, of course, it's crime against the state for you to alter election result. So this, the criminal aspect of that, you will have to pursue it. We have to come up with some legislation where we can punish offenders, electoral offenders. Because to me, it is even more reasonable for you to alter the, the mandate of the people. And then, of course, you now say, go to court. I mean, that adage is um, uh, uh, it, it's sad. Because you now say, OK, I can do anything I want to do. And go to court. That's why people are saying, look, INEC should have the power. Of course, there's a review session. We expected that uh, INEC was going to review some of those decisions, because there were protests, either at the, collation, the final collation, 
So that's why INEC um, has the power by the electoral act to review some of these by seven. They have seven days notice, seven days period to review, and they never did. We expected INEC to come and claim, okay, these are your petitions, these are your observation, this is our stand on it. You know, but why not? Okay, oh, you go to court. I mean, it's very dangerous. I must tell you, even as a practitioner, that um, sometimes people don't even have faith in the system. And, and I can tell you that the judiciary is not the problem of Nigeria because we are our own problems. It's people that go to the court. It's people that go to court, not the court inviting people. So if you have a system that is transparent, if you have a system that people have faith, I mean, we have less of those court cases. And I keep saying that, even as a practitioner, that it's better matters are settled out of court amicably. Because if you go to court, there are two decisions. There's only like drug gamble. There are two decisions. It's either you win or you lose. And the losers will still have a very bitter memories of, of, of any uh, judgment, whether you like it or not, or one way or the other. So if you get the items right, you get the um, election right, a, a bit more, more transparent, because we can't have a perfect election. There's a substantial compliance. You know that um, this person has clearly won, although there are few um, aberrations. Then it will go. But where there is... Um, so much uh, impunity, people are prevented fiscally from voting. I mean, they, you cannot have peace. And what the legitimacy of any election is questioned. I want to take it very carefully. A legitimacy of any election, once a legitimacy of any election is questioned, there's bound to be anarchy, even when the person is subsequently sworn in. So we have to be very careful. Legitimacy of election is something that is very key. Otherwise, it will, it will, it will no longer be democracy. Of course, you know there are other forms of uh, government. So democracy is the legitimacy. The, 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 the majority uh, decision has to be upheld, and that is just democracy. It's not normally the best, but majority decision has to be upheld, and that is the legitimacy of democracy. Mm. Um, I mean, just before we come to Lagos, uh, we'll probably just touch that because, of course, I'm here in Lagos, Lagos, so I'll talk Lagos. <laughs> so, but uh, I'd like you also to share your thoughts on uh, INEX prayers. We probably would just have to be very careful with that. INEC has, you know, said the prayers. They are defending uh, Tinubu's election as president and asking the tribunal to dismiss uh, Peter Obi's, uh, you know, petition, saying that it is vague, it is uh, unethical. I mean, there are a lot of uh, synonyms that have been let, used let, to describe that. Let me quickly that. cut it short. You know, I, I, was, I did a matter up to the Supreme Court just last month, and the position of the, of, of the law is simple. It's straightforward that... INEC shouldn't take position. INEC should be neutral. It should bring just the fact before the court so that the court will take decision. And it's not the INEC's place to come and say um, uh, party A is correct or party B is correct. That's not INEC's position. That has been decided by um, a series of uh, decisions in court. So, um, you know, of course, INEC normally is a nominal party in election uh, related matters. So, it's not INEC's place to come and say, disqualify this person, this person is not correct and all that thing. In, in, in the first place, if INEC had done what they ought to do, very few persons will go to court. So um, the, the contest basically between the petitioner and the respondent, especially the, um, the man who has lost the election, who is the petitioner, and the respondent, the winner, you know. So INEC to me, uh, of course to the law, is merely a nominal party. They will look at the fact presented by the petitioner and the respond. So, but. I think uh, going forward, INEC can do uh, further than that, to me, by just being a mere nominal party, by doing what they ought to do. The question is that, where INEC, where it is established that they deliberately fail to do what the law ought to ask them to do, would they, I, I was not supposed to punish such uh, acts, because to me, it's an insubordination to the law. So, so who is going to punish them now? That is can why we need to have a political will. We need to have the political will. And that is why people have advocated that the office of the attorney general, either at the state or at the federal, should be different from the commissioner for justice. The attorney general is normally is, is, is different from the uh, is, uh, from the political um, class. Class, or so, so to say, yes, of course, because it's more professional. Of course, they have it in other climb. It's, it's, it's less. It can be influenced. You know, I can be appointed a commissioner for justice, and if my appointer uh, thinks one way, it's bad that I'm going to think that way too. But if the office of the attorney general is separated from that of the commissioner for justice or the attorney general for, um, or the minister of justice, you know? So these are some of the things we we'll keep um, advocating. 
that as we go into the next election in 2027, we should have learned from what, is, what has happened and, 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 get to, and get it right or better in the next elections. Mm. But uh, we would have, you know, a uh, second guest joining the conversation now as we look at, you know, this, the, the massacre that has happened in Benue State and the fact that there's a need to call for a state of emergency. But just before we introduce our next guest this morning on the show, I'd like you to also speak to the fact that there's also a petition by one of the candidates of the a governorship elections right here in Lagos, who has actually approached the election tribunal uh, right here in Lagos and is asking for him to be declared as, you know, the governor or the winner of the elections, however you look at it, uh, on several grounds that those who contested the election, especially uh, the president, the governor incumbent, uh, did not meet up to electoral um, requirements, more like a breach of the electoral requirement prior to the elections, party issues, and, and what have you. Nominations. Yeah, nominations. What do you speak to this? Well, I, I think, um, okay, I know that both the PDP and the, the Labour Party candidates in Lagos State uh, have gone to court, each of them claiming victories. Of course, that's why, you know, we, 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 I do not envy the judges most time. Because where you have a situation where two conflicting um, uh, persons are in court, you know, to take a decision is always very difficult. But now, principally, what do we look at in election matters? One, that uh, you were not properly nominated, which has to do with qualification, or you, are, you, are, you have been convicted of a crime and all that, so you are not qualified to have participated in the election. And secondly, that there have not been substantial compliance with the electoral act in the conduct of that election. But in Lagos, in Lagos is very intriguing. You remember, in the presidential election, the Labour Party actually won. And um, from that perspective, from the outside world, we uh, believe that, okay, maybe there will be an upset. But of course, each election is local. Each policy is local. So when it, when it came to the uh, governorship election, there was a different result. So, um, you know, Lagos is a mini Nigeria. Uh, to me, this is where it is all, you know. Um, my friends would not say, if you are not in Lagos, you are not in Nigeria. And I, I keep laughing. I laugh over that too. So um, people are very looking. That's why I'm being very careful because these patterns are in court. We'll look at how the court will look at this issue. But for me, I think uh, we should remain very peaceful, remain very civil in our approach and see the outcome of this um, court. But of course, I will enjoy that. I mean, the judiciary should live up to expectations of Nigerians. All right, then we'll, we'll just delve a little bit from all of that and uh, just take a, a quick look at security, especially the fact that it's very important for our development as a country, and of course, uh, it's it's important. Without security, you and I can't be here, you know, talking anything. 